What's going on? This is Ryan with Automatic Comics, and up next, we are going to go over my top 10 losses of 2022. Stay tuned. All right, so before we get started, please remember to hit that like button and hit the subscribe button if you'd like to see more content like this. So, got the idea for this video from Dave with Comic Book Investments. He did videos on his his top wins and losses of 2022. And I think it's important to talk about those losses. This actually came up in conversation in one of my recent live streams. And a number of people said that they thought it would be a good idea to make a video that covers those losses as well. Because I think a lot of people really struggle with taking that loss on a sale. That's why when we saw the big price spikes in the comic boom and then the price is starting to come down, so many people just, they kept holding their prices high, hoping they would get those sales and they wouldn't and the prices would keep coming down. And then eventually you would have to sell it for even less and take an even bigger loss. And so sometimes it's just better to learn to you know, bite the bullet, take that loss, move on to the next thing. I think it's also important to show that not every sale is a win. You do have certain goals if you're trying to run something like a comic business, you're investing in comics, whatever it might be. If that's the case, you do want to have more wins than losses, but nobody is going to be right 100% of the time. Unless you bought all your books back when they first came off the shelf in like 1950, 60, 70, that kind of thing you will ultimately likely take some losses at some point if you've bought anything within the last five years, maybe even 10 years, depending on what the book is. So I think this kind of thing is, is useful. It's useful to go back and look at these losses, why they happened, what types of books took these losses, if there's any types of trends, and how we can maybe limit this type of thing from happening in the future. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over, like I said, my 10 biggest losses from 2022. I'm going to start with the smallest loss and then move on to the biggest one. And it was a tough one to stomach, but it's important to go over these losses and see how we can maybe prevent them in the future, at least limit our risk to them. So let's check out these books. A few moments later. All right, so now let's get into these books. I'm going to go over what I paid for the book, when I picked it up, what I sold it for. I'm also going to go over the expenses that went into it and why I think I took that loss on that book. All right, so now let's start with number 10. This was Superman's pal, Jimmy Olsen, number 134. This was a CGC 7.0 that I sold in this case. This is the first appearance of Darkseid. It's his cameo. Great Neil Adams cover. Now, this one I picked up on August 8th of 2021 for $326.36. So the prices I'm going to be quoting are going to be my full shipped prices. The sale prices I'm going to be quoting are the prices I paid with shipping. So I paid $326.36. Let's go down. Let's check out a, a 7.0. You can see they give you this kind of like chart data that shows the sales over time. Actually, a book that didn't really spike during the comic boom. It's a pretty flat book for the most part. It has ups and downs for you know based on the the movies, you know, based on Justice League, everything like that. But for the most part, relatively flat book. Now, this one I sold on August 11th. So I sold it about a year later, August 11th of 2022, for 352 dollars shipped. So with that. I actually sold it for more than I bought, but I still took a loss, a loss of $31.90 or 9.8%. Now, the reason for that is when you're selling a comic, you have expenses that go with it. You have the shipping. In this case, it was $11.28 to ship the book. And then you have the fees. The fees in this case, this was an eBay sale, so $46.26. So even though I sold it for about $26 more than I bought it for, I had about $57 in expenses, which results in that loss of $31.90. So why the loss on this book? Really, I think this one is partially, I just bought it near the top. Uh, you know, one of these kind of like spikes in here somewhere. Uh, I got it for a good price relative to that, but the book really after the failure of the DCEU, uh, really not a lot of spec behind dark side right now. So I'd call it a busted spec on this one. And one of those things where you just always have to remember that you're going to have expenses when you're selling the book. Now you can see this book did peak up around $500. And so I, when I was looking at it, when I made the purchase thinking, you know, maybe I could catch one of those higher sales, but once we had that 
that failure kind of in all the Justice League spec and everything. Uh, it's just see this book generally staying flat or trending down. So sell the book and move on to the next one. So now the next one, this one actually isn't any spec or anything like that. This one is Our Fighting Forces number one. It's just the first issue of this series, a Golden Age War cover. I picked up this book. I, I bought a CGC 6.5 on December 12th, 2019. So a few years ago for $642.01. This one I actually also sold for more. I sold it on July 29th of 2022 for $662 shipped. I had a loss of $75.31 or 11.7%. So again, this is one of those where not really a, a book that's going to go up or down all that much. It had had some higher sales. So you can see this book had a sale up at around $950. This was actually my purchase at $600. Uh, I had taxes and all that. That's why it's at $642.01. And then here is... Uh, what is probably my sale? Yeah, so 650 plus 12 dollars shipping is the 662. And so you can see, bought it, kind of maybe hoping maybe I could catch one of those higher sales. But it's just a book that's been flat. I had it for a long time, and I just decided to let it go. So this one, I had 84 dollars in eBay fees, about 11 dollars in shipping fees. And so yeah, again, even though I sold it for 20 dollars more than I bought it for, I took a loss of 75 dollars in change because you have those expenses that go into the sale. So this is just a lower demand type of book. This is one that I just decided I wanted to move it along. I could use that money to get something else. I just held this book for way too long. So now let's move on to number eight. This one is Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles number five. Actually the first full color cover from the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles run. This is also the first time that they move to standard sized comics. You don't have the big magazine type format comics after this one that's issues one through four as well as the you know Raphael number one but this one i bought a cgc 9.8 i bought that on april 17th of 2022 for 405 dollars and sold on october 6th of 2022 for 324 dollars so not even that long but this these books the teenage mutant ninja turtles books they started taking a pretty big fall in the 2022 period. So it was one that I just decided I had to let it go. So this one, I took a loss of $133, about 33%. So with this one, I had shipping costs of $10 and then I had eBay fees of $42. So yeah, I sold it for about $80 less, but took a much bigger loss than that $133 because I had those, those fees and everything that go with it. So you can see here with the 9.8s, we had some big spikes. This is the comic boom. This is what happened with the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles books. It was really one of the first titles that started to spike. It was very nostalgia driven when COVID and lockdowns and everything started to happen. And they held their prices for a while. But then you can see this, like this is 2022. This is probably my purchase. Yeah, right here. I bet this was my purchase um, at uh, 372. And then there was one spike up and then it just trended down a bunch of copies started selling and so once i saw that and i saw that these prices were down here i just decided i would lower my price and i would just let it go and and move on so tmnt books they just fell off a cliff last year and even though it had a high sale of 791 dollars in the comic boom it's really going down around that 300 dollars price point right now and so the, the books have, have come down quite a bit. And most of these TMNT books have returned to almost their pre-comic boom prices. I, I wouldn't necessarily say it's a, a perfect time to buy them yet, but I do think that they're getting much more appealing uh, with respect to where they were over the last couple of years. All right, now let's move on to number seven. And this is Special Marvel Edition 15. This is the first appearance of Shang-Chi. You know, one of the the new big Marvel characters. Now, this one for me was a CGC 9.4. I bought this book on March 4th of 2021 for $1,399. Really, basically like at the peak of the comic boom. Now, this book did definitely get more expensive than that, but I had been holding on to these really in anticipation of the movie. And the movie was received okay, but this book has generally been trending down since then. I sold this book on November 6th of 2022 for 1250 So 
I took a loss of $159 or 11.4%. I didn't have any fees on this one. I, I sold this one with a fee-free payment method. Uh, but this is one, like I said, that this spiked during the comic boom, spiked because of the MCU hype and everything. And it's really been on a downward trend. Let's take a look at that 9.4. And you can really see that here. I mean, we have one spike with the initial announcement probably here for the character. And then the second spike, this was the comic boom. <laughs> this is crazy. I mean, in April, a 9.4 went for $3,292. And now this book selling for just around a thousand. Looks like the last sales right around a thousand dollars for this one. And so, yeah, this, this one has trended down a lot. It is back down. To, it's not to where it was pre-announcements. I, I don't think the book is really ever going to go there again, at least not for a pretty long time, uh, because Shang-Chi is going to be a character we're going to continue to see in the MCU that will have an impact on prices. But we are down around or below where it went to during the drop in prices in 2020. In kind of like that early 2020 range, we had a really big drop in prices. We're back down to there. Does that mean it's time to pick up this book? I, I don't know. <laughs> I don't I don't know if I'd I, if I would really be uh, recommending this book still, I would still be cautious with Special Marvel Edition 15. It's just you can see it still has this downward trend. There's nothing that really gives me confidence that this book has reached a point that's safe to purchase yet. So I'd still be cautious with with this one. Now, I do think that there's a future with that character still in the MCU. I could see there being events that would cause the prices to go up again. But I just don't know when that's going to happen. I don't know what's going to drive that. And, you know, the, the all the MCU movies and everything have been less than stellar <laughs> as of late. And so it's hard to really say what's going to to drive up the price of one of these books. But, but yeah, this was number seven, loss of $159.50. Now, let's move on to the next book. Got another DC one here. This is Detective Comics number 359. This is the first appearance of Barbara Gordon as Batgirl. I picked this one up on November 10th of 2021 for $1,035. I sold it on October 31st of 2022, about a year later, for $989. So again, about the same price, but I had fees and shipping with this one. I took a loss of $176.90, about 17%. I had shipping fees of just around $12 and eBay fees of $118.98. So you can see that's where this is one of those cases where if the prices of the books stay flat, then you can still take some pretty substantial losses just because you have to pay out those fees. And I know people will say, well, why don't you sell off eBay? That kind of thing. Reason is that when you sell off eBay, people usually want the book minus the fees anyway. So it's the same difference. Um, so this is one of those books that also really spiked during the comic boom for DC. A lot of DC books didn't, but there are definitely some that did. This is one that did. There are a few reasons for that. One was the movie that was going to be coming out, which was then canceled, uh, which might have even been for the better because I don't know. It didn't look like it was going to be very good. But still, yeah, the movie that was canceled, that hurt it. This is also one that had some massive sales in 2021 and 2022. One was in 2021, we had a 9.8 that sold for $132,000. So big sale for that one. Then we had a 9.6 sale that sold for 78,000 in September of 2022, 66,000 in September of 2021. So you had this book that in the high grades, selling for some pretty substantial numbers, in this case, even going up from 2021 to 2022 for the 9.6. But in the lower grades, this is a book that has really been trending down. Like, let's take a look at that same 5.5 five grade, see what it's been doing. And you can see this book, pretty consistent for a number of years, just general growth, then a huge spike. And then now it's back down around those prices that it was at before the comic boom. Honestly, this is a book that I don't think would be too bad to really be looking at purchasing right now. Uh, this is one I wouldn't be concerned. I mean, maybe it goes down a little more, who knows, but I wouldn't really be concerned with this right now. This is a book that I feel like the risk on the downside is pretty low and you've got James Gunn coming into the, the DCEU. And so maybe there's something that would eventually 
drive up the price of this book again. But regardless, this is a great book. <laughs> this is a great Silver Age key, a popular character. And so I wouldn't be really concerned at this point picking up this comic. All right, let's move to number five. We are at Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles again. So this one is Raphael number one. This is the first appearance of Casey Jones. And in this case, I had a CGC 8.5 that I bought on December 18th of 2020 for $500. And I sold on October 9th of 2022 for $324. So not only did I sell it for $176 less, I also had eBay fees of $42, shipping fees of $850. I took a loss of just over $226 on this one. A big loss, almost 50% loss on this one. This one definitely hurt a little bit. Now, I already talked about the TMNT books. They definitely got super, super hot. This book used to be really cheap. This was, I mean, let's take a look at the 8.5 so you can kind of get an idea where this book was. You can see this book going back into 2019, 2018 was a $100 book, $150 book at best. It then spiked up over a thousand dollars for an 8.5. And so this is a book that even though now it's come back down to 275, 280, 300, that kind of thing. I would not be real confident purchasing this book at this point. I could still see this book going down more. The tough part with it is that for these earlier books, this is one of the ones that had a slightly larger print run. I don't remember exactly what it is. I think it was around 60,000. And because this book didn't have much value prior to the comic boom, not a lot of people were getting it graded. Grading magazines is slow. It's more costly generally when you're doing this with CGC. And so not a lot of people would send them in. But when a book is worth $1,000, a lot of people will send them in. And so you had a huge glut of books that got sent in. And so now you have way more graded copies, a lot more copies on the census. I would not be shocked if, if we were looking at historical numbers for this, that this jumped significantly over the last two years, the number of graded copies. And so with that, you now have less demand just because the comic boom's over. You also have way more supply because so many people getting them graded and that's what you end up with. You end up with this steep drop in prices and I could see it continuing to drop. I would just, I'd be cautious around a lot of the TMNT books right now, except maybe the really early ones, you know, like first print type books, because a lot of those have corrected. Um, but with this, it'd still probably be a little wary of it. All right, now let's move on to number four. This is a really relevant character right now. This is Avengers number eight, first appearance of Kang. I had a CGC 4.0. This is actually a book that I bought raw, got it graded, and then, then sold graded. Uh, so I picked this one up on September 19th of 2021 for $1,004.50. Sold it on July 31st of 2022 for $900. My loss was $259.71 or 26%. The reason being that in addition to the, the fees from selling it, I sold it on PayPal uh, or using PayPal. So about $27 in fees. I also had the grading and pressing costs of $117. So I didn't just have the 10450 loss and then the fees. I also had the grading loss that was in this one. So this one hurt a little bit more. Now, this is definitely one of those books that spiked a lot during the comic boom. It has continued to come down. Uh, definitely a book that I could see it going up again a little in the future, but I'd be very cautious right now. You have the movie that just came out, and this is a book that I could see trending down again for a while until we get that character popping up again. So definitely one to be to be cautious with. So let's take a look at the, the 4.0. And so you can see the comic boom here. I mean, this is a book that, I mean, it's Avengers number eight. It's an early Silver Age key, but it was a pretty consistent, constant type book. I mean, even look at this. Before the Kang announcement, this was a $100 book in the 4.0. Uh, then this is probably around the Kang announcement. It's a $250 type book. Then we start to get into the comic boom. becomes $1,777. This is a book that went from a $100 book to almost a $2,000 book. Now we have been on a constant downtrend since then. And I could see that downtrend probably continuing. It's now going for around $700. So this is a case where I sold it for 900. It's now down around 700. And so this is where sometimes you just 
you know, you take the loss and you move on and you, and you try to get something else. And this is one that I would be especially wary of personally. Uh, it's just that I don't see Kang long-term as being a really popular character, even if Jonathan Majors does an amazing job with the character. I see once his arc is done in the MCU, that this is a character that kind of goes kind of back to obscurity. But it's something you could probably buy and sell over the next few years if, if you wanted to take that chance. But definitely one of those sell the event type books. All right. Now let's move on to number three. This is Star Wars number 42. First appearance of Boba Fett in comics. He makes his first appearance in that like Marvel Super Special 16. I think it's what it is. But this is the first appearance in comics. I picked this one up on July 4th of 2021 for $1,152.95. Sold it on November 5th of 2022 for $937. Took a loss of $349 on this one for this 9.6. I had eBay fees of $121.62. I had shipping of about $12. So yeah, this one definitely definitely hurt a little bit because I sold it for over $200 less than I bought it for, and I had the fees. So the thing with this one is that I was a big fan of The Mandalorian. I was definitely buying into the the whole Boba Fett thing because of how well The Mandalorian had done. And then the show Boba Fett was a pretty big disappointment to most people. It was, I mean, it had some okay parts to it, but generally it was a pretty big disappointment. And so that with the comic boom and the disappointment in the show definitely has caused a the prices in this book to just drive down. So let's take a look at the, the 9.6 and we can see where this book is at right now. So this is one that you can see here, huge spike. Prior to the comic boom, 9.6 was a $200, $250 book type of book. Hit a peak price, looks like around $1,400. You know, I picked mine up for $1,152. And so I was a little under that peak price, but definitely it started taking that fall pretty soon after I bought it. And it has been on a constant downtrend since then. Another book that I would probably be pretty cautious buying right now. I mean, it's Star Wars and all of that, but I just, I look at the prices that this book was at before the spike and I, I, I don't know if it'll go all the way back there, but I could definitely see it going lower than where it is right now. So Star Wars, number 42, first appearance of Boba Fett, definitely would be a little cautious on, on a book like this. I mean, you have a book that went up about six or seven X and a retreat is pretty normal. And I could see it dropping further based on what we've seen with a lot of other comics and how they've returned kind of to their prior general trend. And this one has a long ways to go before it gets there. So definitely one that I'd be cautious about at the moment. All right, now let's move on to number two. <laughs> this one, I'm sure that I wouldn't be surprised if this one was also on Dave's list. I don't remember. I haven't watched that video in a while. Uh, but this was Eternals number one. I had a CGC 9.6. I bought on April 1st of 2021 for $555. And I sold it on August 21st of 2022 for $200 shipped. So I took a loss of $390.84 on this book. I had shipping fees. I had eBay fees. I mean, this one, this one definitely stung. However, I will say I did buy and sell a lot of Eternals books over the last few years. And so, yeah, I took a loss on this one and maybe one or two others, but I did well on a lot of other ones. And so that's the whole thing where it's, you, you try to have more wins than losses. And this was a case where I just eventually had to cut this one loose. I just, I did not see this book coming back anytime soon. Maybe it will. It's probably near the bottom of where it's going to be. I mean, $200 for a nine, six. I mean, that's even if people don't like the Eternals, if they don't care about the Eternals, it's not all that much money. Um, but this is one that it's probably doesn't have much risk at this point, picking this book up. I mean, let's, let's look at this. I mean, <laughs> this is where you basically had that, like the movie type announcements, and it's pretty flat up here. A nine six going for around three hundred fifty, four hundred dollars. We're down sitting at around two hundred bucks right now. You know, one hundred seventy five, two hundred, two seventeen. I mean, it's really been hovering around two hundred for a while. 
will it go back to these pre-announcement prices where this book was going for $70, $80? I doubt it. I really doubt a 9.6 will go back to that. It's probably pretty safe to buy right now, but still, I just, I don't see an event coming up anytime real soon that would cause it to go up. So to me, it's still rather just get the money out, take the loss and use that to get something else. But yeah, man, Eternals number one, this one has definitely fallen from grace. <laughs> I mean, a book that went from, you know, about a hundred dollar book to going for just over a thousand, a thousand fifty two back down to a $200 book. And the nine, eight, is a similar story. The the nine eight for this one was I think it topped around four thousand. Yeah, peak uh, a peak price of three thousand seven hundred eleven. It is now going around six hundred to six hundred and fifty dollars. So, yeah, I mean it's it's like I said, probably relatively low downside risk, but I don't really see the big upside potential to it either. So. It's just not one that's all that appealing to me at the moment. All right, now the last one. The biggest loss that I took for 2022. Then we'll we'll cut back over to the uh, away from these screens and we'll talk about kind of some of the trends, what we can learn from all of this. This is GI Joe number one. So I bought a CGC 9.8. I bought it at the peak of the comic boom. I I didn't pay the highest price, but I paid a pretty high price. But at May 9th of 2021, that is basically right around when everything was topping out or a lot of books were topping out. I bought it for $2,361.22. I sold it on August 8th of 2022 for $1,489. I took a loss of $1,082.74 or 45.86%. I think that's the biggest loss I've ever taken on a book. <laughs> the first time I've broken four figures on a loss for a comic. So that one was definitely a little unpleasant, but, uh, but yeah, I mean, it wasn't just selling it for, you know, around $900 less also had $189 in eBay fees. I had $19 in shipping. So that means it had to have gone out to like California or something. Um, but yeah, this is another one that spiked big in the comic boom. I bought it near the peak. Then we had the snake eyes movie come out. That was a big disappointment, even though that wasn't you know, GI Joe in general, I feel like that put a big damper on anything GI Joe moving forward. The book is going around $800 now. So it has continued that slide. So this is another example of sometimes you just, you let the book go and you move on to something else here. We can see that 9.8. This is a book that prior to the comic boom was going for 350 to $400. It peaked at right around 2500 2467 so i didn't pay much less than that peak i mean my price was with tax and everything so i probably paid around 2200 but i i paid almost that peak and then it just kept going down after that and has continued that trend down and this is another one that it doesn't look like there's anything slowing this one down i could see this book continuing to fall and so i would be pretty cautious buying G.I. Joe number one right now. I mean, it's one of those things, if you get it for a great price, fine, whatever, whatever. That's always an exception, but I'd be pretty cautious picking up this book right now. So those are the 10 books. Let's go talk about the trends, what we can learn from these sales. 2,000 years later. All right, so those were the 10 books. Now let's see what can we learn from this? What trends can we get from this? How can we try to maybe prevent this from happening in the future? It's impossible to have no losses. Uh, nobody is 100%. Nobody is going to always get everything right. Unless you bought all your books 30, 40, 50 years ago, whatever it might be, uh, you're probably going to take some losses at some point. So if you're doing this as an investment, if you're buying and selling books as a business, the goal is to have more wins than losses. That's the main thing. So if you're doing that, you're already you're already doing fine. So don't worry too much about taking those losses. The next thing is when to realize that you should just let the book go and sell it as a loss. Because a lot of the time that book might continue going down. So sometimes it's just better to take the loss, move on, go and get something else. So you need to make that evaluation. 
And I think most of us are probably a little too slow making that decision. I know that's my, myself, that's true as well. You kind of like hope you'll get that sale. And then as you're waiting, the prices just keep trickling down. At least that's what it's been doing with the, the comic boom type prices. So sometimes you just need to accept it, take the loss and move on and try to get something else. Now for me, I like actively buying and selling comics. It's something that I really enjoy doing with comics. I like getting new comics in. I like, like buying stuff and I like selling I like selling comics so, so for me I like to just let the comic go if I'm at a loss and then go on and buy something else because one of the things you have to look at is there's also a time value to that money so if you have a comic that it's going to take five years you think if you you estimate it'll take five years for you to make back the loss on it or if you could go buy something else, you find something for a real good deal and resell it in a month, 12 months, six months, whatever it might be, and make that same money back, you might as well just move on and get something else. Otherwise, you're effectively wasting that five years of time to get that, that money back. So that's why for me, if I feel like I can sell it and then buy something else with it and turn that around, I would rather do that. One, it's more fun for me. It means I'm getting more books in. I'm getting new inventory I can list, all that kind of thing. It's good for, for my business, but also it's just something where I am more effectively using that money. So that's definitely something you need to evaluate, look at to see if, if it's more efficient for you to just let it go and then try to buy something else. Now, I think one of the last things here is let's look at some of the trends here. What types of books caused problems the most with, for me over this last year? And so what you can see is that almost every book that was on this list was a speculative or movie hype driven book. We had, and so I'm talking about the characters here. So we had Shang-Chi, we had The Eternals, G.I. Joe, Boba Fett, Kang, Batgirl, and Darkseid. Uh, we also had the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, which was a little more nostalgia driven than anything else. But still, that's seven of 10. Maybe you could say nine of 10 if you include the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles that were really speculation driven books. Now, that doesn't mean that you can't buy and sell books based on speculation. Plenty of people do that. Plenty of people do very well doing that. But timing becomes much more important and you have to be aware of that timing. You have to Buy at the right time, sell at the right time, or get it at the right price and sell at the right time. When you're buying books like that, they are very event driven. You have things like trailers or movie drops or character announcements, that kind of thing that will spike the price of the book. You need to take advantage of those. And if you miss that event or the event fails, like you know, with, with the case with the Eternals, the movie wasn't received well and the books just started falling, you need to act and sell those books at that time. It's very similar to the stock market. If you have something you're buying and you're expecting an earnings announcement or some other type of announcement with the company and then that thing happens, you sell then. Or if it fails, you sell then because it's an event-driven purchase. And that's the same thing here. If you keep holding on to them, it's just, it's gonna hurt more and more as time goes on. So that's one of the big things here is that like I said, about nine, so either seven or nine of these were event driven or, or speculation type books. And so when the event fails, you have to make that decision to sell. Otherwise, they just keep trending down because I think most of these are lower now than they were when I sold them. And so, yeah, even though it hurt to take that loss, it would hurt even more to take a bigger loss now. So... Those are the books. That's the kind of like the overview, the, the trends, the things that I feel like I, I learned from this. Hope this was useful for you. If you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button. Hit the subscribe button if you'd like to see more content like this. I've got more videos over here. If you'd like to watch some of my other videos and the subscription button right here. If you'd like to subscribe to the channel, I'd really appreciate it. And I will see you in the next video.